Hi, my name is Daniel Kang, and today I'll be talking about jointly optimizing pre-processing and inference for DNN-based visual analytics. This is joint work with my colleagues at Stanford University. The visual data lets us query more of the world. For example, analysts can answer queries of the form, how many cars pass by Monday, or find hummingbirds for ecological analysis. Visual analytics is increasingly done with machine learning, in particular with accurate state-of-the-art uh, deep neural networks, which can produce accurate results, for example, for finding hummingbirds here. Historically, a key challenge for executing visual analytics queries with deep learning is that these ML models uh, have, are expensive. For example, here I'm showing the uh, different set of ResNets and the amount of flops it takes to execute these ResNets. As we can see, these DNNs can take up to tens of gigaflops to execute, which is substantially more expensive than standard query processing techniques. However, over the past few years, systems advances have dramatically reduced inference costs. And what I'm showing here are accelerators. As we can see from 2014 to 2020, the throughput of executing ResN50 has increased from 159 images per second to nearly 24,000 images per second, which is an increase of throughput uh, by almost 100 times. Furthermore, there's been a lot of work in the analytics community to uh, reduce inference costs in the form of using proxies. And there are many ways that these proxies can be used, but a standard way of doing it is to execute a substantially cheaper small model, which we call a proxy, over all the data to generate scores. And then these scores are used to directly filter, uh, <coughs> to directly answer records that the proxy is confident on. For example, the top and bottom records here. And the expensive uh, target deep neural network is only executed on uncertain records. And in this particular example, we're trying to select buses and the proxy is confused by the truck. A key challenge now though, is that deep uh, neural network inference is more than just DNN execution. For example, as we can see here, there's many steps for pre-processing the data, including decoding the image, resizing it, normalizing it and transferring it to an accelerator before the DNN is executed. Uh, and I, de I detail these steps in, in more detail in the full paper. Because of these dramatic improvements in systems, pre-processing costs can now dominate end-to-end -end DNN inference. For example, what I'm showing here is the breakdown of pre-processing versus Resident 18 and Resident 50 uh, in, in uh, normalized latency units. As we can see, pre-processing costs are up to 7.1 times higher than Resident 50, which has historically been, been considered an expensive deep neural network. And we're uh, running this benchmark on the AWS G4DN.xlarge instance, with, and we're using optimized libraries for pre-processing and, and multi-threading on all the cores. And it contains a single uh, NVIDIA T4 GPU. Furthermore, popular benchmarks ignore pre-processing times. For example, the ML inference benchmark uh, explicitly allows for untimed pre-processing. And this is problematic because power and dollar costs are now dominated by pre-processing on modern accelerators for many workloads. And so in this talk, I'll describe how we can make end-to-end -end visual analytics execution efficient. Now that I've described the motivation for why we care about pre-processing, I'll describe our system small. I'll first describe by cost modeling for visual analytics. I'll describe how to jointly optimize processing and inference. And then I'll conclude with our experimental evaluation. First, let's look at cost modeling for visual analytics. The way this works is that given a query, we, animate, uh, we generate a set of plans and then estimate the accuracy and throughput of various query plans using a cost estimator, uh, and then execute the, the plan to generate query results. If we look at cost modeling in prior work, it unfortunately ignores either uh, pre-processing or pipelining. Specifically, uh, these cost estimators uh, use uh, the, inverse, the, sum, the inverse sum of the inverse throughputs of just the deep neural networks, or ignores the fact that pre-processing and DNN execution can, can be pipelined when using accelerators. And as we'll show in the evaluation, this can lead to suboptimal query plans. In contrast, small uses a pre-processing aware cost model and as we can see here, it uses a very simple modification, which is the minimum of the pre-processing uh, uh, throughput and the uh, inverse sum of the throughputs of the, uh, uh, of the deep neural networks that are being executed. 
Uh, well, this change is simple. We'll, see, we'll, we'll show that it, it uh, results in, in uh, more and better uh, cost estimation in our evaluation. So now to describe how to integrate small into cost estimation of these existing systems. I'll describe how small can be can be incorporated into the executor uh, of uh, prior systems as well. And I'll, I'll describe how to jointly optimize pre-processing and inference. The first thing we do to jointly optimize processing and inference is we use cost-based optimization for common pre-processing op operations. Uh, you don't have to worry about the details here, but there are essentially a set of rules which we can use to rewrite uh, pre-processing optimizations, uh, basically operator reordering and fusion. And because there's about uh, there's approximately fewer than 10 standard optimization, uh, 10 standard pre-processing operations that cover the majority of visual DNNs, uh, this covers uh, the space of most pre-processing operations for visual analytics. Additionally, we can leverage low-resolution visual data what I'm showing here on the left is uh, a full resolution image of a cat, and on the right, a thumbnail of it, resized to the same, uh, to the same resolution. As we can see, while the thumbnail does lose some visual acuity, uh, it's fairly easy to tell that it's still a cat. And so low resolution visual data can achieve the same accuracy for many visual analytics tasks. I will note here that this does not apply for all tasks. For example, if you want to find small objects in, uh, in images, but this, uh, but this works for a, a large range of visual analytics tasks in particular. Small also leverages partial and low fidelity decoding. What I'm showing here in red is the full image. In green, the region of interest that we care about for a particular uh, visual analytics task. And in, uh, in blue, the decoded portion of the image for uh, two different uh, ways of doing partial or low fidelity decoding. And the, and the key idea here is that we only decode parts of the image that are necessary. So now that I've described how to jointly optimize pre-processing inference, I'll describe our experimental evaluation. We execute on the g4dn.xlarge uh, uh, AWS instance, which has a single T4 GPU and four vCPU cores. In our full paper, we execute on four image and four video data sets, but I'll show one each in, in this presentation. And for the baselines, we use a, a previously optimized system, Tahoma, and also ResNets for image for the image uh, analytics tasks, and the Blazit system for the video analytics tasks. For the image analytics tasks, uh, we attempt to do classification here. Now, what I'm showing here is Tahoma and the naive uh, on the uh, on the left hand side of this plot, and small on the right hand side. All the baselines are bottlenecked by pre-processing. So as the accuracy decreases, we can see that the throughput does not actually increase because we're not bound by the DNN. In contrast, small uses pre-processing aware optimizations for up to 5.9 times higher throughput at a fixed accuracy. I also show that small's cost models are the most accurate. Here we're showing three different configurations. Uh, for different query execution plans, a balanced configuration, a pre-processing band configuration, and a DNN band configuration. As we can see, a small uh, chooses it results in the smallest uh, error for across all uh, all three cost estimations, and this is important because erroneous cost models can lead to poor choices of models downstream, which we in fact see for the visual analytics task. Uh, similarly, here, a small is on the bottom, and uh, the baseline of Blazit is on the top. The reason small is faster is because it selects larger but more accurate models as proxies. And so this results in faster query execution because we have to, we have to uh, query the Oracle few, fewer times. And finally, I show that all optimizations are required for performance using a lesion study, uh, both the low resolution visual data and the pre-processing optimizations. In conclusion, DNNs have historically been expensive to execute, but modern systems have made pre-processing the bottleneck. Small jointly optimizes pre-processing and DNN execution by correcting cost models uh, for selecting uh, DNNs, optimizing uh, common uh, uh, pre-processing steps, and leveraging visual compression formats for up to 5.9 5.9 times higher throughput with no loss in accuracy. My email is here, and I'll be around to answer questions as well. Thank you for your time. <laughs>